Groves is ahead of the pace with that lap time of 28 sits. Incredible. Tiring. Has the last inner, but she hears the crowd behind her. Is it Groves' turn? It's her race. Her time, Christina Groves, with another silver medal in the 1500 meters. So after you have uh, science girls and tech girls and art girls and comedy girls and and media girls, you need some jock girls. <laughs> Come on out here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Moses, kindly for including the one clip from the games that just breaks my heart. <laughs> the blue line, that stupid blue line. I can see that blue line that was, you know, from here to there behind me for most of the race and just this much in front of me for the end, but uh, that's the way life goes sometimes. I was uh, extremely fortunate, although it was an earned fortunate, uh, to race in five different events at the Olympic Games in Vancouver, and five is an unusually high number for an athlete to compete in that many events at the Olympics, but uh, that's what I did. And I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of what it was like to be at the Olympics and hopefully get into my big idea. But uh, my first race at the Olympics was the 3,000 meters. And going into this race, uh, it was a possibility that I could win a medal. I knew it was a possibility. I'd previously been the world champion. Uh, but it wasn't expected. And I was in the next to last pair. I had one of the best races of my life and was in third place with one pair to go. And in the final pair, there was a German girl. And I've raced against this German girl for 12 years. And we're back and forth all the time. But recently, more often than not, she gets third, I get fourth. So I'm sitting on the bench after the race next to my wonderful teammate, Claire Hughes, and I'm watching her go around, and I'm sitting on the bench looking up at the clock, and she's coming down the, uh, the last lap. And I'm sitting there going, Claire, she's going to do it again. She's going to get me by a tenth of a second in the last lap, and I'm going to come fourth. And she said, Christina, you had the best race you could possibly have. You have to be proud. And we're just sitting there thinking, what is going to happen? The German girl crosses the line. The crowd goes wild. I win the bronze medal by three one hundredths of a second. <laughs> now, four days later, I was fourth in the 1,000 by six one hundredths of a second. <laughs> I lived both sides of that coin. Uh, three days after that, I went into the 1,500 meters. Going into the race, was, this race was completely different. Many expectations, many uh, predictions. Christina is going to win this race. I was going into it, leading the World Cup standings. Of course, we saw that I came uh, second in that race. I actually can't believe I pulled that race off, considering the pressure internally and externally that I felt to perform in that race. But that's the way it went. Fourth race, 5,000 meters. Nothing much to speak of, other than it was a six a sixth place, and uh, I got to uh, watch my uh, iconic teammate, Claire Hughes, win a bronze, her sixth Olympic medal in that race. And finally, my last race, the team pursuit, which some of you may recall was an absolutely devastating moment for me, probably the worst moment in my entire speed skating career. Uh, we failed to advance past the first round by four one hundredths of a second, and uh, going into that, we were the gold medal favorite, and it just uh, fell apart. And crushed my spirit in the biggest possible way. So as you can see, I experienced a wide variety of results at this Olympics, every possible, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, and so it would have been nice if it was shifted up just one, or maybe if it was first, 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 and first would have been even better, but <laughs> that's not the way sport goes. And uh, you know, one of the questions I got from the media the most going into the Olympics was, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think? How are you going to do? Who's the favorite? Who's going to win? And I got kind of sick of this question because one of the most wonderful and compelling things about sport is simply that we don't know what's going to happen. That's what draws us in. We're there to see the excitement, what is going to happen. And uh, so I just would tell people, you know, 
we don't know what's going to happen. And I said, it wouldn't be that exciting if we knew what was going to happen. We could just mail out the medals and keep bothering, like, no one, keep everyone from the trouble of showing up. So uh, that was my, my stock answer for that question. But of course, the most exciting and wonderful thing about sport is that we don't know what's going to happen. And we, we enjoy so much the human story behind sport. And isn't that the most compelling, wonderful thing about life? We don't know what is going to happen. And that is sometimes a wonderful thing. Sometimes it's a terrible thing, but that's the way it goes. So I'm here to ask a quick question. Who has ever here, either involuntarily or voluntarily, come upon a point in their life where they have no idea what is next? Many people. Oh, I'm not alone. That's so great. <laughs> so I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about the power and purpose of uncertainty. For my entire life, well, since I was 11 years old, for the past 22 years, I've lived in these four-year compartments, four-year cycles, where everything is completely structured. I used to think I lived this really alternative lifestyle, but in fact, I just do it in an unusual occupation, a structured life. I just do, uh, I think, literally what most people do figuratively every day. I go in circles for a living. <laughs> um, <laughs> But today, this is the first time in my life that I've come to a point where I actually don't know what's next. I've been to three Olympic Games, I've won four Olympic medals, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> but one thing I've discovered in the last few months is that when we come upon uh, moments of uncertainty in our lives, it creates an incredible opportunity because it forces us to think about and create the future that we want to have for ourselves. And I think that that is an amazing thing. The power. There's a very big power in the, in the uncertainty of life. And often when I think about my races, I think of them as a blank page in front of me. And I have whatever it is within myself, my body, my mind, to write whatever I want on that page. And I'm at a point right now where I have a huge blank page in front of me. Does it include continuing to skate, uh, you know, continuing my education? I could do whatever it is that I want, and that's an incredibly powerful thing. There's also a purpose of uncertainty. And we don't always know what that is. When I was a little girl, I... Uh, I was 11 years old, and we were driving home from the cottage one afternoon, and we stopped at a Petro-Canada gas station to fill up on gas. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a poster advertising the Olympic torch relay from the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. I was instantly completely inspired and wanted to be a part of this relay. Jumped out of the car, ran, filled out my ballot, and dropped it in the box. When you're 11 years old, this is basically a guarantee that you will be chosen. <laughs> so I was completely convinced that I was going to be chosen to run in this Olympic torch relay. I think my mom also thought that I was, you know, she thought this was a really cute dream that I had. So we were back at the cottage a few weeks later, and uh, she said to me, Christina, if you're going to be running in that Olympic torch relay, you better start training for it. The torch is going to be very heavy. You're going to have to run quite a long way. So that afternoon, I went for a run down the dirt road at the cottage by myself, holding a hammer, high in my right hand, <laughs> pretending like it was an Olympic torch. I felt silly, self-conscious, inspired, wonderful, everything. Every time a car went by, I made sure to drop the hammer so nobody could see what I was doing. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, my Olympic dream was sparked, and a few months later, I discovered the sport of speed skating. I had no idea what path my life would, lead, would take from that point on. And the purpose in the uncertainty is simply that it gives you purpose. You find out what it is you want to do with your life. I've often been criticized for being a dreamer. I take it as a compliment. <laughs> I think it's something that we um, forget all too often. I like to read quotes on a pretty regular basis. Don't under undertake a project unless it is manifestly important and nearly impossible. And I think if I were to add something to that, I would put important to you, because not everything is important. What's important to me is not necessarily important to you. But uh, when I was a young kid, I often was in a category with just one other girl. Speed skating wasn't the most popular um, sport back then. And uh, so I did a lot of competitions in, in Ontario where it was me and one other girl. And I came second pretty much every time. So you could look at that as winning a silver medal or coming last. <laughs> and I chose to look at it as winning a silver medal. But 
Many people told me that I wasn't going to be good. I did World Cups for seven years before I won an Olympic medal. And uh, I just learned an incredible amount of patience. I wasn't a young star. I didn't have an incredible amount of talent when I was young. There's absolutely nothing remarkable about my story. Perhaps the most remarkable thing is simply that it's completely unremarkable how I got to be where I have. It was simply a love of the sport that I had, and I enjoy so much to speed skate. And, you know, I, I once heard my career described as uh, the trajectory of a marble under a meter stick. Very slow. It took me many, many years to get to be where I am today. And so uh, this quote, I think, is quite powerful for me. I recently had to fill out uh, a CV. I, don't have, I haven't had a CV, I think, ever in my life. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sitting down at my computer, uh, Christina Groves, name, address, telephone number, work experience. Uh, 1988 to present, speed skater. Done. Print. <laughs> Who is going to hire me? Um, <laughs> But one thing I've realized in those 20 years that I had as a speed skater, um, I've learned an incredible number of skills, but perhaps the one that I take away the most and is most powerful to me at the moment because of the point I'm at in my life where I'm completely uncertain about what I'm going to do is simply that dreaming is a transferable skill. And we often think of dreaming as this intangible quality or in some fluffy, otherworldly idea that is untouchable. And I've learned, I mean, my dream was beside me for the last 22 years when I've been trying to figure out what it is or how it is I'm going to become uh, an Olympic speed skater, an Olympic medalist. And, uh, you know, that dream, I had to lean on it a lot because I didn't have the results when I was young. And I've come to a point in my life where I realize dreaming is a transferable skill. We can absolutely use this to get to a point in our lives where we feel just so joyous in what we're doing. So I'd like to leave you with this simple formula, my big idea. It's so obvious, it's so simple, but as uh, one of our speakers heard recently, or told us recently, I think it was uh, Lionel Tiger possibly, stating the obvious is something that we tend to do quite often. And uh, it's so simple, dreaming plus doing equals change. And the dreaming part, we're all capable of doing this. Bridging the gap between dreaming and doing is something a little bit more challenging. And uh, the simplest way to do it is to simply, obviously, do it. And the way I look at it is the dreaming part is easy. And the, the way to bridge the gap is simply if the inspiration to, uh, if the inspiration is strong enough, the motivation required to act is effortless. Thank you. Thank you. What are these? Um, well, I thought for our photo that you might like to, um, you know, put something on. Oh. 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 No, no, I... I, I, I insist. I insist. <laughs> this is my favorite one anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, that's got, that's got weight to it, boy, this is, I'm down there. You guys are beautiful. Oh, this is great. That's fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Can I take it with me? <laughs> Olympic conference giving. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.